Hey guys, this is Bruce and welcome to Convo Courses. Today we're going to be talking about a job offer for an information system security officer. Let's jump into this. Okay, so we're talking about an information system security officer job. And before we start, I need to let you know that I, if you're interested in actually knowing more about risk management framework and how to do an ISSO's position, information system security officer work, I've been doing this for many years. I've done it for 20 years and so i know a lot about how the practical implementation of this particular position so if you're interested in that go in the description below and you'll find out how to get to my course and if you're interested in other courses i've got some other ones as well so you can sign up and enroll for free and if something comes up that i create you'll you'll be the first to know all right so this is in el dorado hills california and this is an information system security position and the job description let's just kind of go through this it's uh first off it's for a company called mantech they've got lots of positions open open as of 2020 and uh it's an international company and i, I would highly advise you to not only go to lenza.com uh, it's a pretty decent uh, job site but also go to mantech.com itself and then sign up right there if you're interested in the company all right, so the job description, the duties are to, wait a minute, did I skip something? Let me see. All right, so for the job description, they say secure our nation and ignite our future. So I think that was a, that might be a bit of a typo. <laughs> Let's just get into the duties. Maybe that'll tell us a little bit more. All right, you're going to provide oversight for establishment and implementation and adherence to a policy and standards that guide and support the terms of the information security strategy. So what that, what that means to me when I'm reading this is that you're gonna be reading through their existing policies of this organization. And, and it's in El Dorado Hills, California. You're gonna be looking at their policies and you're gonna be making sure that it is consistent with a good information security strategy and you're going to be looking at basically you're giving them a little bit more information on whether or not their standards, their uh, work instructions, uh, the things that they've implemented in their environment adheres to the policies that they've already written. And then you'll take it a step further by taking those policies and saying, OK, do these conform with the state laws? Do they conform with the federal laws? Where it is it? Is it all flowing in the right direction? And then if it doesn't, you would go and tell, you know, you would report it up and say, okay, well, here's where I see that you guys could, we could probably improve the privacy issues because we got these new privacy issues in California that we need to deal with and that we need to be implemented in, in your privacy policies. Stuff like that is, is what they mean by oversight of their policies and whether or not they're implemented properly. Okay, provide risk management activities that assure an acceptable level of risk for the organization. Um, <clears throat> are they doing the risk management framework process? And is it at it? Is it bring? Is it minimizing the risk to the organization? Are they doing things like continuous monitoring, for example? That's one of the things that you do in in uh, the risk management framework. So that's one of the things you would do. And it says produce a risk management framework package for the DOD. So D Department of Defense have their own flavor of risk management framework. It's still based completely off the NIST. Uh, if you're familiar with this, the NIST standard, it really follows the NIST and all the controls in the the um, in NIST uh, special publication 800-53 is where all you find all the controls. 53A is where you find uh, how to assess the controls and the expected results of those. And then the risk management framework process, you'll find that in NIST 837. So they're following that. It's just the DOD has like in this extra layer sometimes with when you get into Intel or when they're dealing with more highly classified uh, items, they'll have like this overlay and extra, kind of an extra step that the Department of Defense takes. And then their policies they have to every organization has to make their own policies that are based off of the federal laws 
So there, it, there's a little bit, you'll find some differences between, say, DOD and Department of Homeland Security versus some other organization. There's slight differences in how they implement these different things. Okay, let's see. Let's go to manages the information system, uh, the information security incident management program to ensure the prevention, detection, containment, correction of security breaches. So you're, this sounds like incident handling. So you'll be managing the incident handling process. Sounds to me like they don't have a large organization doing this. Sometimes um, you have these huge organizations and they'll have like a whole department that that's all they do is incident management and the reason why i know that this may be this is more likely small is because they're kind of having you do that they're kind of having you put that on as an extra hat rather than having a incident manager like a whole job that's a, for one person that supervises all the incident management stuff going on so it sounds like this is kind of a small unit but i could be wrong you would want to contact them the get more information because that's where they're going to give you more details obviously they're not going to put all of their business out in the street and these you got to contact them directly and get some kind of rapport and get kind of go through the the process of becoming a uh, risk management framework information system security officer and then they'll they will explain yeah we have we have 500 people here in the office and then three people do the incident response that's when they will tell you that kind of stuff but uh yeah, if you're interested in this job, just go below. I'll have all the contact information there or the link where where I'm looking at this right now where you can find this. All right, skills, what they're expecting you to know is experience with DOD information assurance policies and procedure. And what they mean by this is that the Department of Defense has different branches of the military. You got U.S. Air Force, Army, Navy, and then the Marines are under the Navy. Each one of those departments has their own procedures for implementing information assurance that is in line with NIST 853-837. That said, if you are extremely experiment, experiment, experiment? <laughs> if you're extremely experienced in NIST, what you could do is go ahead and apply for it, you know, and say, well, you know, I've never worked for DOD before, but I'm very, very familiar with NIST. I've been doing it for 12 years. And then go for it. You know, what do you have to lose? So uh, another thing is because um, we're always looking for new uh, information security people, cybersecurity people, especially risk management framework because a lot of people don't want to do it. It's just too, it gets too political. And I talk about that in my course about how to navigate that. They also look for experience with DOD risk management framework packages and associated work products. So associated work products could be um, things like plan of action and milestones, uh, system security plans, um, memorandums of record, memorandums of, of agreement, and all other documentation that goes with this entire process. Creating policies from scratch, stuff like that. Education, certif uh, certifications and education. So looking for a bachelor's degree is preferred. That's a good sign because that means that you don't necessarily have to have a degree, a bachelor's degree. You can go in with no degree uh, or an associate's degree and say, I have five years experience and they're looking for at least five years of experience here. So if you, let's say you come in, you got seven years experience, but you don't have a bachelor's degree, I would go ahead and apply for it, especially if you have experience directly with Department of Let's say you, you were in the Navy for five years and that's all you did was information assurance and you know how to do the packages. You can go ahead and apply for this job. You probably get it. Um, MCSC, looking for certifications such as MCSC which is a pretty big certification, Security Plus or similar certification. And again, I would say if you don't have those certifications, if you have 12 years, 10 years of experience doing risk management framework and you worked in DOD, like, and you, you know, sometimes they'll actually pay for you to get the Security Plus. You know, what you may also want to do is just go ahead and take the Security Plus you know, go ahead and take the Security Plus. And if you, if you actually have information system security officer experience, you can just go ahead and take the cap. So if you have this certification right here, authorized, uh, certified authorized professional, authorization professional, I have this certification. This would be a good one for this particular 
position because it actually breaks down the entire nest. Here's the stuff that it talks about here. Categorization of the system, selecting the security controls, implementation of security controls. It's basically the nest. I mean, this is this right here is the nest. So that certification would I think would suffice instead of the MCSE, which doesn't give you anything for this particular position, I don't think except the extremely technical background. Uh, security Plus might give you a little something for this particular position, but I mean, as far as security, basic uh, security practices, best practices, stuff like that. Okay, candidate must be able to obtain or maintain a security clearance. Uh, so that's a big one. That means that you need to be a US citizen, um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so that's it for this one, guys. If you are interested in knowing more about this position i will put the link that you see here a link to the description below gotta act fast because this one's probably going to be gone but if it is gone if you click the link you go there to lenza.com and it's not there anymore don't worry what you can do is go on mantech's site mantech.com and then apply there right on their site and i'm sure they still have cybersecurity information assurance uh, information system security officer type positions all over the United States. All right. Talk to you later.